to Fun Tonight. I'm your host, Rich Giordano, and it is March 29th, 2024. It's Friday. Get this closer here. You guys ready? All right. Ready? Is this good? Is it good enough? Tonight! It's going to be a quick show. Probably going to do an hour. A little bit under the weather again. So uh, I don't know if I have the energy to go two hours, but uh, definitely I'm going to try. So one hour probably is really where we're going to be, unless adrenaline picks picks up on me, but I don't see that happening. Um, <clears throat> so um, tonight, if you know a grifter is lying to make money, why are we supporting it? I'll give you the answer and then that's it. You ready? Because it's entertainment. That's it. Hold on. Wow. I never had a kidney pain like that before. Holy crap that was excruciating um all right so we'll try to do the hour and um and that's pretty much where the show is probably going to be going because why do two hours why am i killing myself there's no more covid right plus what can you do support isn't what it used to be and that's that I can only do so much. Dorothy, thank you very much for the $2 super dono. Appreciate it. Thank you for your support, as always. All right, we'll do a little roll call and we'll get out of here. Glenn Collins, welcome to the show. Brookers, welcome to the show. David, welcome to the show. Kelly, welcome to the show. Marcel, welcome to the show. Glenn Show, Sean Show, Bernie Show, Marcel Show, Tony Show, Bernie Show, Sean Show. All right, if I didn't say your name, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It means we got a short time to do the show. Welcome to Goof On. This is probably how I'm going to do the show from now on. I mean, no, nobody cares, so we'll just we'll do it as such, according to according to what I think is fair. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm in a dick mood. I'm just tired of being sick tired of it. And this is an allergy sickness that I think turned into a freaking flu sickness. And then I re re uh, re uploaded the uh, sickness when I had the coughing attack yesterday on the show. So that's when it started up again. Freaking coughing, sneezing, sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever. So you can rest medicine. And you take it with two wolf beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. On a sesame seed? <laughs> on a sesame On a sesame seeded bun. Seeded. Two wolf beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. What was the other one? What is that? Nausea, headache, diarrhea. What's that one? Oh, I can't remember it. But they do something with upset stomach diarrhea, I think they do, right? They go to sniffling, sneezing. Uh, uh, that's not it either. Did we do roll call already? <laughs> uh, we shouldn't be here tonight. 
We shouldn't be here tonight. I'm just letting you know. This show should have been canceled. Show. And, and then there's a word. You know, Dorothy, I know you're going to leave soon if I don't get exciting here in a minute. Uh, it's just, there's nothing, nothing exciting to do. I don't understand what I should be doing anymore in this field. What am I going to do? I know. I have one chapter left in this 20-year career, and that is to dump all of my UFO videos online and let people go to town. That's what has to happen. That's the next, but I can't, and uh, I can't load them up on the computer. I found the software, but it wants the key code, you know? And I wrote it down. I found it. But guess what happened when I put it in? Invalid! So I don't know what to do. Yeah. So, hey, if you want to help support psychology for ufology, go ahead. It's up to you now. <laughs> it always has been. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to talk about anymore. You know, I talk about wanting to try uh, that hallucinogen that Joe Rogan takes, DMT or whatever. But people who take stuff are never the same. People who try drugs like that, they change. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Is it the same thing as LSD? Because listen to this. LSD felt that they were undergoing enormous personal changes. They weren't the same person after having LSD. And there was a scientific study, it was done by a RAND scientist. And what he said was, even though all of these people said that they felt enormous changes, the personality test showed that they were largely the same person in every area but one. And this was called the ways to live scale. The ways to live scale indicated that one dose of LSD stimulated enormous changes, whereas this, the, uh, the person taking the test might have said, it's important for me to get a corporate job, it's important for me to have a good car. After one dose of LSD, they were saying, I think maybe a contemplative lifestyle might be what I want to have. Uh, I think I'd like to travel before settling down. I think uh, maybe I want to look for some spiritual value in my life. Things totally changed around. Everybody that took LSD felt that they were undergoing enormous personal changes. They weren't the same person after having LSD. And there was a scientific study, it was done by a RAND scientist. And what he said was, even though all of these people said that they felt enormous changes, the personality test showed that they were largely the same person in every area but one. And this was called the ways to live scale. The ways to live scale indicated that one dose of LSD stimulated enormous changes, whereas this, the, uh, the person taking the test might have said, it's important for me to get a corporate job, it's important for me to have a good car. After one dose of LSD, they were saying, I think maybe a contemplative lifestyle might be what I want to have. Uh, I think I'd like to travel before settling down. I think uh, maybe I want to look for some spiritual value in my life. Things totally changed around. change. Yeah, I don't care about that in the corner. Care less. Uh, I had to go grab some pills here. Take these uh, allergy cold and flu. I have no choice. Yeah, so um, we'll see if I ever uh, get around to taking that DMT and I think that'll be fun. Mm. Oh. Oh. I'm coming around. I'm coming around. It'll take an hour for me to get going. All right. I'm starting to feel a little better, but. almost just want to 
just want to talk about something completely different than UFOs and shit. Check this out. So Greer has been doing a lot of promoting lately. Like, a lot. I get emails every day from him. I'm sure you do too. Some of you probably do. There's two videos from Greer. And I just want you to listen to these. And now, you may think, yeah, yeah, I know what Greer's going to say, and we've heard it all before. I don't remember hearing this one, though. Because I always thought the Greer, that Greer said there was no, excuse me, was no threat. But the threat is us. Oh, come on. Hang on. Make sure I get the right one in there. the ufos well there is a threat the real threat however is not from the extraterrestrial ones it's from the man-made ones the rogue man-made elements that have studied the et craft perfected a lot of their systems and then have weaponized them and have turned them on uh, into these sort of uh, frightening episodes to quote unquote abduct people those aren't being done by extraterrestrials those are doing being done by the fake aliens and we have a whole dossier on that, going back to uh, the late 50s, early 60s. The Barney Hill, Betty and Barney Hill case everyone's heard about, that was one of our anti-grabs with some good stagecraft, <sighs> making it look like an aliens abducted those that couple. Wow, Greer is a piece of work, isn't he? So now Betty and Barney Hill were abducted but not by aliens, but by, I would assume the CIA-ish. You know what's funny about that? I didn't think we had technology where people could uh, talk telepathically. Did we? I don't think we had that technology back then. I'd be surprised if they did. I, I don't remember that type of technology being available in the, when were they abducted? 60s? 50s? What was it? 64? Yeah. I don't know, Greer. Greer is, uh, he said that before. So it's not, uh, I thought he said we're working alongside the alien. But we're actually doing the abducting with the alien ships. Come on, man. See what he did there? He's keeping the abduction scenario alive. Because you can't just say it's not happening. Because uh, people will lose their minds. So to keep that still relevant, you keep it around, but you say it's us. We're wearing costumes and their and their space suits to look like them. And we shrunk it in a foot and a half too, just to be three foot tall. Do you know that? I guess we'll two feet maybe not. Anyway, check this out. Totalitarian super state where the people are united against some alien threat. And that is the big, super big picture that people need to understand. It's why I would say 90 plus percent of everything out there on this subject is some type of disinformation that's being curated for its uh, what's called psychological warfare value. So it's a complex problem. And actually, that agenda started in 1953 at least. I have a document from a sitting CI director, uh, General uh, Walter Bedell Smith, and, and CIA Director Smith in 53 describes to the Psychological Strategy Board of the CIA the psychological warfare value of the UFO subject. I never thought that Greer and I would be on the same plane of agreement, of agreeance. Hold on a second. And uh, 
I just think it's interesting how similar we think. But it is a psyop. It has to be. Because that they're using, and, and even if the UFOs and aliens are real, they're using it as a cover-up anyway. It doesn't matter anymore. It never, it really hasn't mattered to the government what we believe. They just don't care. As long as we are quiet and sit behind our computers and don't go burning down the world just to find out, who are the aliens? You know, we know where they're at. No, we don't. We know that they're, they're hidden somewhere. We know we have their craft. But is it all just a lie? Well, who knows? Who knows? But after all these years, can so many stories be faked? You know, we're not talking about the government 2,000 years ago, 800 years ago, 500 years ago. I'll give you one better. There wasn't a government that we know of 500 million years ago. London Hammer. Why? Why was it found in, 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 in 500 million year old dirt earth, whatever? Well, no, that's impossible, Rich. They're just lying. Everybody's lying. Of course they are. No, they're not. Uh, there's a couple other little nuggets out there of information where they're finding some really high-tech, weird, anomalous coil stuff. Remember the coils? The glass coil uh, They in, in with the, right? Remember all those? There were thousands of these coils, like it was a, a junkyard of sorts. Yeah, let me see if I can find those. Hundred thousand year old coils. Uh, very old uh, technology found glass tubes. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, let's see if this is it. This isn't it. Oh, wow. Somebody found an old bong. Glass tubes, man. That's a bong. That's an old bong from a thousand years ago. Uh, oh, there's the uh, Antikythera mechanism. The oldest computer ever uh, seen. Ancient glass. Let's see. What were they called? the tubes is it a nixie tube i think it no it's not a nixie tube ah shnikey it'll pop up someday soon yeah not the saxon glass working experiment somebody know anybody know what those were anybody know no, I don't type with one finger at a time. I can type 55 words a minute. That's my best. With very, very little mistakes. Hey! I know these peoples. What's up, Michigan UFO settings and paranormal encounters? Glad you just got here. Anomalies and the real deal. They're both here. All right. See how many people aren't here tonight? It's all planned. All right. I have a lot of nothing because I want you to listen to this and, uh, and, uh, and then you tell me if we should uh, keep going. I could already tell we're not going.
who is the kind of grandfather of all ufology, and he's such an interesting person. My interviews with Jacques Vallée, who is the kind of grandfather of all ufology, and he's such an interesting person and has such a really unique origin story about how he came into all of this, and he's such a scientist, right? And he is profoundly dedicated to this issue and stands completely on the opposite end of the spectrum from me and knows a lot more and has studied this for decades more. But what he said to me is the most interesting thing, which is that it's not a military problem, it's an intelligence problem. Because Jacques believes that this is some kind of intelligence, right? Which really, the closest I can do to wrapping my head around that takes me to consciousness, right? The idea of what is consciousness. What? And I think that's where it becomes very interesting. I think the government is hiding bodies and crafts is is very Paul Benowitz. Read it. I inter oh my God. She is just awful. Awful. Always have been. Always. Never a big fan. Am I a big fan of anybody that is a main speaker in ufology? No. No. I'm not a big fan of anybody. I don't like any of these people we see. I don't like anybody in this field, to be honest with you. They're all fucking liars. That's why. You really want to know the truth? Jacques Vallée, Stephen Greer, they're fuck knobs. They really are. They don't have any evidence of shit. Nobody does. That's the whole thing. Oh, I, uh, I interviewed this and it's on a dossier that, oh, yeah, oh, Mr. Powerful Dossier. I've uh, given my uh, review. What, what does he say uh, with the president? Uh, I've uh, something to the president. You, know, you never gave anything to the president of the United States, Greer. You never met one. May have been in the same room. Oh, I briefed Bill Clinton. So what? Who hasn't? <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's the whole thing. You wonder why I'm the way I am. Because everybody's bullshitting. Everybody's guessing. Nobody knows anything. And that's what's frustrating. And then you find out the people who know stuff don't know anything at all. We find out years later, they were lying too, right? Well, they had a good reason. See, this is what I don't understand. And I'll use Richard Dolan and, and uh, Linda Moulton Howe as two of the people in this field that have been here for a long time, talking a lot of this, and never proving anything. Not once. Come to find out the stories they've been telling us were bullshit. All of them. Except maybe the Wilson thing. That that one is still up in the air. And if that's real, eh, pretty cool. And I think it is. Wilson Davis thing. A lot of interest. At first, I wasn't a big believer. Just, yeah, there's programs out there that are looking for UFOs and studying this anomaly and that phenomena. Yeah, it's been going on forever. We know. We know. And you're going to hear me say it over and over again. We don't need 40 more whistleblowers. I'll tell you what. Give us four. We'll do four whistleblowers. And end it. And all the stories are going to be the same. I was part of a project. I was part of a program. It was a top secret. It was a black budget. Uh, you know, we, we created this unbeknownst to the government, which is why I couldn't say anything because I was still working there. And I got to be anonymous because I'm a real whistleblower and I don't want to get unalived. Pretty soon, we're not going to be able to say unalived. You know that. We're just going to have to go, right? I don't want to be, you know, I mean, we're going to have to start miming. So the algorithm doesn't go, unalived, it means dead. Goodbye. 
Shadow banned forever. Don't be surprised if Goofon's on Rumble tomorrow. Don't be surprised, folks. Um, it won't be, but it might be. We might have. I already have the Goofon uh, channel on Rumble. You can find it there. There's no videos yet. But we're on the world's biggest platform. Rumble is one twentieth of of YouTube. Going there wouldn't matter. Look at the number. Remember in January, 180, 220, 190. And then February, half. Everything. It, it's not fair. All right. Shadow banning is the biggest bullshit scam on uh, free speech that has ever been implemented in, in any type of program. This is such bullshit. And YouTube lies about it. When me and many others have data proving we're shadow banned. Do you know I, I made a, you know when you make a comment after, you know, like when the show ends, you can make a comment and people could thumb up it, right? So I'm on the auditor thing as goof on and I leave a comment on a brand new video. And the guy, six months later, I go back to watch the video because it showed up and I see my comment. It has zero thumbs up. But the guy below me has 900 and the guy above me has 700. And I'm sandwiched in between with zero and my comment. I know how to comment to get thumbs ups. Not one. So that means I'm shadow man means nobody can see me or the channel block me, which isn't true because I know the people. They can see me because it's their channel. But even they said, oh, that's weird. So I've been doing these little experiments on different channels, different platforms, and I'm invisible. Nobody ever thumbs up me on any platform. I say platform on any channel in any genre. So it sucks. I'm literally just pitching and, and talking to people that know me that that know the show's on. They don't even really advertise for me. Uh, in January, I had a 60 percent recommendation, 14 percent now. That's not because of me. It's the algorithm. It's the way they screw us over. I had the two worst months in history. February and March after the best month in history. How does that happen? How do you go from being hot as a butter knife to cold as a stick? It's not us. And that's what I don't like. I don't like that it's not fair. Uh, I don't, I can't stand YouTube for doing what they're doing and controlling the way we speak. You know how I am about the First Amendment. Now you do at least. But um, it is what it is. And it's we're dying on the channel. Uh, UFO man told me that a while back. He goes, once you get to 10,000, he says, once we got to 10,000, our channel died. Something like that. I don't know. But he says, yeah, once you get there, it's over. And he's right. He's right. Anyway, back to work, I guess. We'll keep doing what we're doing. And hopefully things will change. But they won't. I keep saying it every year. I got to show you this video. I don't know what the hell this is. This is very strange. Do you know when we see shooting stars, they're basically the size of a grain of sand. That's what I was told. Right? But look at this. I don't know if you've seen this video. 
This is a meteor or an asteroid. A meteor is when it hits the ground that uh, screams through the atmosphere and then nothing. Oh my God. Okay. What is that? I'll play it again. That's it. Can I be honest with you? Didn't it look fake? The way it just disappeared? I'm not saying they faked it. I'm saying it looked fake. It did. It looked very strange. Yeah, look at it again. Come here. Sorry, we don't need to go through the whole thing. But the whole tail disappears pretty much at the same time, right? When it hits the ground. Like, why would it turn off like that? Why doesn't it just disintegrate, like, going into it? You know what I mean? Why does it turn off all at once? Why doesn't this part shrink in, right, and slowly disappear downward? Instead, the whole thing turns off. It turns off. Watch. See? It's weird. It's blinking off instead of disintegrating into the ground. It's very strange. And if that's a grain of dust, sand, whatever, yeah, I, I'd be scared if I was on that ground thinking this big old tail screaming at me. And then it just, boop, very odd. Makes you wonder if reality isn't real like what we just saw it's part of the uh, frosty illusion the computer program that we're living in that's why it didn't look the way it should have that's why when the planes went into the building in 9-11 they went in and disappeared vanished because that's not something that happens every day the computer didn't know, had nothing to compare it to. So that's what they did. I just find that very strange that no pieces really fell. Anyway, that's another story. Maybe we'll talk about it in September. Because by then, the other channel will be up. Who gives a shit? We're gonna start we're gonna start testing YouTube with Goof on. Eventually. I wanna see what we can do. See what we see what we've been missing by being good boys. You know what I mean? People are allowed to get away with things they're not allowed to. If we do it, we're done. If they do it, it's okay. Rules for thee and not for me. So Jeremy Corbell. If you've seen the thumbnail. You know what I mean. This guy, and I don't understand. I don't get you guys. Not you. People who are listening that support him. What's the, uh, what's the deal? <laughs> what's the point of supporting somebody who lies? I don't get it. The one thing Jeremy Corbell says time and time again where me and George he says we're creating a discussion that needs to happen I agree it doesn't need to happen it should happen it doesn't need to happen but it should but not based on lies not based on a foundation of bullshit. Because anytime you build something like that on weak foundation, as we saw with To the Stars Academy of Arts and 
lies. They eventually come crumbling down when the truth comes out. Or the truth doesn't really come out, but demise will happen. What was that? Could it be a PayPal? No. Oh. That's weird. Oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry. A little distracted. But who cares? Nobody cares anymore. I could sit here for 40 minutes and not say anything. Same show. It would get the same views, the same, same crowd. Nobody. Actually, that would be a better show. Probably be a better show. Right. The reason SpaceX is here, because SpaceX stands for Elon. <laughs> and uh, Elon Musk may save the Internet. He may save us all. Let me tell you why. X, formerly known as Twitter. The rumor is Elon Musk is going to make a video platform like YouTube. You know what that means? Free speech. I'll be the first to sign up. I'll be the first to sign up. My God. Can you imagine? It'll be like rumble on hemorrhoids. Steroids. Steroids. And hemorrhoids. But Jeremy Corbell. Let's get back to that. The psychology behind Jeremy Corbell is very simple. This guy is lying, taking advantage of gullible and desperate people. I'm, I'm desperate. I'm not gullible, but I'm desperate for the evidence. So I'll sit and watch Jeremy Corbell's video. I'll sit and watch any video if there's a chance it's real. And if it isn't, we'll have fun debunking it. We'll have fun figuring it out. That's what I like about the field. The fun stuff like that. When somebody, anybody, puts a video up and it's supposed to be this amazing story, the sighting, dozens of witnesses, maybe hundreds, who knows, thousands, all see something. But then in the end, they pull the carpet from underneath us, revealing an unsteady foundation of bullshit. It was all masked, lied about, blanketed over with the story that sounds too good to be true, but yet credible because credible people were making their visual statements of something in the sky. And Oh my God, these 22-year-olds, they have so much life experience out there with a camera in their hand, staring at the sky, knowing what they're looking at. But they're military. They know everything that's in the sky. That's what they train for. No, it's not, yodel. That's what you tell people who want to believe what you're saying. Well, they have to understand what ballistics are. The yeah, true, from man-made shit. Wow. They said it could have been flares, but they thought they saw a craft. Thought they saw a craft, but it looked like flares. Come on. They already just told you the truth. But that's what he does. He banks on people remembering the first thing they hear. Because the first thing they hear is the one thing that sticks in everybody's head. It was a swarm of UFOs over the Russell, a swarm of UFOs. Two days later, I don't know, the retraction happens. It wasn't a swarm. It was only one, and it was, wasn't over the Russell. It was over the Roussel, you know, some sort of stupid error like that. But everybody will remember the swarm anyway. You believe what you want to believe. Nah, they're covering it up. That's the cover-up. Even if we showed evidence saying, no, no, really, it was just one object. It was a glitch in the matrix on the, the radar, you know, 
<laughs> you know how that happens. And we, you, me, us, America, the people, we can only go by what they show us. Yay? Yay. I think those pills are working. Yep. Oh. Oh. And I, oh, I almost pulled my uterus. Where's Jarvis? Jarvis! Oh, there he is. I'm not doing no Jarvis. Excuse me, sir. Right, let's get back to work. Shall we? Corbell. Ding dong. Corbell. Ding dong. All right, what do we got? Tomorrow, the roundtable show. It's the end of the month. Last Saturday of the month is the roundtable show. Minana on Gufana. I can't wait. It's going to be a good one tomorrow. You know why? Because it's you. And when you come on, you make the show that much more exciting. So we're going to have you on. And if you don't like it, you don't have to listen. No, it'll be a good time tomorrow. We're going to talk about the things that make us uh, annoyed. Yeah, annoyed. Uh, it, but ufology, the whole paranormal thing. What is your beef now? Now that this year is already one quarter of the way through. What's happened so far? I'll tell you what's happened when it happens, but nothing's happened. Arrow? That was the only thing that happened this year, right? That's the only real thing that's happened, yeah? Dropping that uh, silly report they put out. They. <sighs> I'm looking for... The, uh, here it is. <clears throat> hey! Oh, here we go. Well, that's right, everybody! It's a super chat! Skandra with a five pound, five quid! Keep up the great brother! It's appreciated. I'll keep up the great. You don't know what it's like. It's insane. They're shooting at us with harsh language. They're, they're, they're accusing us of lying. Lying. Hoaxing. Cheating. We're truthology for ufology. We've been here 20 years. How dare they sound the alarm. No, 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 no. That's a super chat alarm. It's a good thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Scandrel. Appreciate the five pound, five quid. Keep up the great, brother. Yeah! We're going to keep up the great. I love that, bro. That's That may be the single best error I've ever seen. Keep up the great. That's I love it, dude. I am going to keep up the great. Hold on. I think that's going to be the name of the new channel. Keep up the great. <laughs> no. Thank you very much, Scandrel. I appreciate the smiles you just gave. Like, like the support, too, man. Thanks for being here. Pre where? Hey, who's this guy? Dr. Dan Villiers. All right, we get it. We get it. We get it. We get it. Thank you, doctor. That's a $10 we round up here at Goofon. We like to give you, you know, other, hey, other channels, they go down. 
So uh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you sending the love, man. Thank you. It's a super sticker. Thank you very much. That's because what do we do? We do... Oh, it's truthology for ufology. For you. You hit the wrong one. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Dan Villiers, for the $10 super sticker, sir. That good. For the penny. Awesome. Thank you. That was a first time super chat, I believe so. It happens. Thank you very much. Super generoso tonight. Thank you. And thanks for hanging out everybody i appreciate this uh so okay let's uh we'll keep the show going with our 84 people here it, it just doesn't make any sense but i i think i i i'm right all right i am gonna show you something i'm gonna give you a um here's what i want you to imagine i want you to imagine This alligator that you're going to see, this alligator attacks a baby hippo. I want you to imagine us as the baby hippo's support. Watch what happens when this alligator tries to take on a baby hippo. And watch the support the baby hippo gets, which I think is us. We are the backup. Without us, it would all come crashing down. They would take us alive. Ufology would be eaten from the inside out, from when you were born, infant, knowing nothing. And you come into this field, and where do you go? To the wrong side. Don't do it. You come to Truthology for Ufology because you get this kind of support. Corbell. Get him. I think I saw Greer in there too. David Wilcock. Get him. I think there's a lady in there too. Yeah, Goofonians. That's right. That's right, we're rebuilding this ship. We're going to come at you with every tusk, every ounce of fiber of our muscleness. All right, let's get back into this, okay? Let's get back. All right. Annie Jacobson. Give me a break. Big joke. 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 All right. So you guys have been very good today. Very nice. I appreciate that. You guys have showed up tonight on a Friday. The beginning of, oh, it was Good Friday today. So congratulations to those who may have some ashes. Is that, no, that's Ash Wednesday. I'm not a really, I'm not one of those Christian I don't even know what I, I'm not a Christian. I mean, I was baptized and all that, but that wasn't my idea. It's not my idea. All right, what's this? Schumer rally? Oh, my God. They removed it. They removed the debrief, removed the rally that was put on, that they were talking about for a few days. 
they removed that video that showed Osvaldo Franco and everybody out in the front. I think it it probably had to do with what I said. I know it, it people watch. Well, they were. They were celebrating losing. Why would you support that? Hey, let's hey Schumer, great job. You you tried so hard, you failed. Let's have a party anyway. No, you do that when he dies, not when he's still alive. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that shit until they're dead, not while they're alive and failing. You only do the failing shit after they're gone. Because then you could compile it. The effort was there, but they failed at everything they do. That's Schumer. They'll, oh, there's already compilation videos as if that guy already died. There's so much wrong. It's no wonder they were trying to make a positive because the guy's all negative. Nobody believes that guy. What's really going on on the moon? Tom DeLong tells us everything. Did you know that? Tom DeLong knows everything. This guy should get into you. Oh, he is, isn't he? Watch this. He knows everything. How does Tom DeLong know what's going on? But anyway, this is a compilation of stuff. Go. Company's going to be building, you know, this this uh, electromagnetic craft that really can do the same thing to time that I've been telling you about. Other civilizations have that too, which means you can traverse those distances. How does he know? How does he know other civilizations have that? Oh, <laughs> that's right. He's been there. This is of space. And what you have to think about is what happened when we first discovered that and what did we do about it? And there's no, you know, you got to look at 47 in a very peculiar way. 90 days after the Roswell event with CIA was created, the Air Force was separated from the Army, the National Security Act was created. And all those things are mechanisms to start learning more and to start getting private industry off the ground. And that was all during an election year. So things were already changing anyway, Tom DeShong. Acting like, oh, because the, the, the UFO crash that we had changed, that we had to create the sea. They were already in the middle of doing it. So that had nothing something. to do with World War II. You think it had to do with aliens? <laughs> it had everything to do with World War II. Oh, I absolutely think it. Well, it, both, because... Oh, now it's both. Well, you bring it up now. I can't, I can't say it's not about the war because I'd look stupid. What, uh... Look, all kidding aside, and I'm not. Foo Fighters were damn real. Okay. They started to create all the things that he was saying many moons before. It, they didn't just come up and do all that stuff in 90 days. Yeah, it's because of when it was happening. It was in September, which was, uh, never mind. What I believe crashed at Roswell was. Doesn't matter what um, I think. Well, I believe it was German from Argentina but it had hallmarks and technology based on alien technology. So we put out a story saying it's alien. And then we put out a story saying it's a weather balloon. But the real thing it was, we didn't want anyone to guess. And that's why we put those two things out there. And that's, that's kind of how they do it. I think they did that with the moon. It's like, you know, we went to the moon. We went to the moon. No, we didn't go to the moon. Then we did. Moon. And then uh, they put out this meme kind of thing. Like we can't. We we didn't go to the moon. But they didn't want people really going. Well, what's on the moon? Boeing's first stage booster is gone. North American's second stage booster is gone. Now Look at these two skeletons talking. Now we've got the S four B stage and the LEM. Okay, so. These people are barely alive. We're a very small vehicle. And this is that Kennedy? Extraterrestrial vehicle is coming. It looks like it's going to hit us. <laughs> it didn't. And it had no intention. Simply came in, moved around us, and finished its orbit. Uh, then those guys eventually landed on the, the high edge of the craters, like the steep part of the outside edges of the round craters. Mm -hmm. They didn't land, they parked above it and they hovered. They were hovering, just like it shows in your drawing? Yeah.
Take a look. Take a look. So that's what they think they saw on the crest upper ledge edge of a meteor crater, 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 crater. Hoovering ever so slightly. Looking uh, very crystalline, right? Don't they have this like crystal type of uh, design? Like it's a crystal. I wonder what it's made of though. Is it? I wonder if they're made of crystallines. You know what these look like? Shut the shuttle. It looks like the shuttle. Wow. Huh. It was determined that uh, when Neil Armstrong said, good God, sir, they are enormous, referring to these massive extraterrestrial craft. craft. Okay? Uh, they weren't crafts, they were ships. <laughs> they weren't crafts. They were ships. I'm going to translate to what I think he means. They weren't crafts. They were ships, meaning they weren't little crafts like this size. They were massive ships like the Titanic. That's what I think he means. <laughs> and then he goes, ga, 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 ga. They were ships. <laughs> they were not crafts. They were ships. And so for them to be parked around the edge of the crater, above the surface, Hoover floating, it. okay, and then many of the reptilians standing with their legs apart, standing okay, okay, up right, on right, the right. ground. <laughs> they're on the surface. The reptilians are on the surface of the moon. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, they're standing underneath. Who's this no chin guy? That's that's Beaker. That's Beaker from uh, from the Muppets from uh, Sesame Street. Look at that guy. What an interesting looking head neck. I'm not joking. It's okay to point out people's abnormalities. Nothing wrong with that. The guy's got no chin. No chin. He's an alien. And what did we hear? What's his name say? Robert O. D. You want to play? We'll play. I'll tell you what he said. These aliens look like us. If they were to sit next to you on an airplane, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Oh, we can tell. Look at this guy. That's an alien over here. Hey, where's my thing? Shut up. Go. The ships. And you saw this. Yeah. And uh... did you hear his answer? Did you hear how he said, yeah? And you saw this. Yeah, but that, he he's super. I, I like to call this super deflecting he deflected super quick he was waiting for this he knew this question was coming and the lie just got well turned into what looks like the truth because of how quickly he answered he's not telling the truth this guy didn't see shit you think he saw aliens on the moon watch this answer i'm telling you he was waiting for it he's part of the problem go yeah and uh um, what the with their legs up. Watch how fast he says this. Part standing okay, okay, up all right. on the ground. <laughs> they're on the surface. The reptilians are yeah. on the surface of the moon. That's yeah. what you're telling me. Yeah. They're standing underneath. Now that's not the answer. The ships. Here we go. And you saw this. Yeah. And uh, um, were they were they scaly? Did they have the? Then the, no, then the word. They... Then the word came back. <sighs> they're giving us the finger. Your advisor. 
You've got to be kidding me. Did he just say what I think he... Can you get the right screen ever? I'm big, I'm small, I'm little, I'm huge. He just said... Did they gave them the finger? You know... That means that... Uh, they were human wearing costumes. The word came back. They're giving us the finger. Your advisors <laughs> use the term the others? Yes. In my communications with certain people within my advisory group, it is referred to as the others. Um, the well. others makes a lot of sense because the first thing people need to realize about the UFO phenomenon is... It that it's an intelligence, intelligence that's here. here. Has always it's always been, been here, here. And, and I think, I think calling, calling them others the makes other. a lot more sense because they are in our oceans, they are on our moon, they might be underground in certain places, even in Antarctica. So you're talking about the other groups of intelligences that are here on the planet with us. Got it. Thanks to Shlong. Ah, here we go. Let's see. UFO Mysteries and Theories with George I remember being at a party and someone whispered in my ear that worked for one of these big, uh, these big defense contractors and said, hey, we've been mining on the moon for 30 years. For 30 years, we've been mining on the moon. It was this no guy's joke. serious. This was a you serious know, person. It's, it's got to be on the dark side, right? It's a, it's a ser very serious person. And, um, but no one knows about this stuff. So a lot of my fascination you know, it isn't about trying to prove that aliens are real. It's more or less like, you know, if there's a secret about this stuff, there's a good reason. It's either these guys are so scared of something that they haven't been able to to do what they needed to do, or they they don't have all the facts yet, so they're not they're not ready to release it. There's there's something that they're either scared of or they're not sure enough in themselves to release it. And that that's the kind of thing that that I ask myself, like, what is the reasons for them not not telling people? It's I'll tell you. You already know. It would change everything as we know on Earth. Uh, also, I, know, I just thought of this. Um, I, you know, because we're here on Earth, if we found out that there were for real aliens on the moon, they're not going to come here. They stay on the moon. Let's just leave it there. And what would happen is people here on Earth, well, You'd get a lot of people trying to look at the moon with telescopes. Great. There would be a boom in sales for all that stuff. Good. The problem you're going to have, though, and I don't think it'll ever come to fruition, is having somebody launch themselves to the moon. Yeah. The only person that can do that thing would be a guy like Elon Musk. But, you know, he's renting out NASA, so... Nobody's going to do anything down here. And that's the thing. Tell people there's aliens on the moon, and we will not believe anything else you say after that. Well, if they're on the moon, then they're here. See, you can't open up that Pandora's box, Tommy. Once you do, you crack it a little bit. It's like the old saying, you can't be a little pregnant. You either are or you aren't. So, whether you want to keep it or not, that's another story. <laughs> hey, you got to throw it in there. You were thinking it. That means we, we, we might want to get rid of the aliens. Yeah, I don't know. See that guy who was telling the story about the moon ships and everything. We don't know if that's his script, and that's part of the uh, threat that we have to keep alive here. Because if we don't have the threat, we don't get the funding. But here's what I here's what I know. The threat has never happened. It's always there, but it never, you know, attacked. Why keep doing the threat? Just tell government, tell tell Congress. We just need the friggin' money. At this point, that's all you need. Why? You know why? Just don't make me, you know, just 
shovel it over. We need 50 million. 50? Yeah, 50. Price has gone up. I don't like playing games. Hey, you gave us 22 mil in 08. Did we? Oh, don't you play games with me. It's 50 mil. About 40. 50. 45. 50. 42 and a half. 50. All right, 50 it is. See, you don't have to do, you don't have to lie. Just tell everybody. It's black budget money. And you know what? You know what they're going to do? They would still make it look like, you know, somebody stole the funds and, and did all that stuff because, you know, appearances is everything. You want to have that threat look real and make it see how desperate people are in our country, in our nation, at the White House, wherever. Pentagon trying to change things to get the money, to get the weapons, to fight everything we don't understand. To fight everything we don't understand. We need money for that. How are you going to kill these unknowns? Do they die by bullets? Uh, huh. Laser. They'd probably die by laser. No? Hmm. Oh, I got it. Direct energy weapons. Can I ask you something? With all this money, and I'm just spitballing, I'm just throwing it out there. Where do they come from? Ah, Saved by the Bell. Let's take a look, shall we? Excuse me. Thank you. Hey, Bob Birkins, the shirtless wonder. Two Bs are better than one. What's up, metalhead? So, continue. Let's just continue. Because I, and I would believe the only reason is because they're not, they're, they're too scared to. Not, not because it's going to bring down religion, not because it's going to make us all run around in circles. I think it's because they're trying to do something that's much more serious. And then people will start to understand over time why they did what they did. They didn't lie to people uh, just out of like ego. It's, it's they were like, okay, there's this group called ISIS and they're here and we need to understand them and we need to fucking figure it out quick. Uh, but the problem is these are extraordinarily advanced civilizations that have been coming here forever. That's why it's all in all the ancient fucking scripts and texts and carved into rocks and all that shit. And that's the way they viewed the Wanjina stories. The Wanjina stories were a This is what I've been waiting for. This is the genius. This is our new theologian of ufology. I love Ross Cuckold. Love Ross. I'm sorry, what did I just say? I meant Rose. Hey, it's Moonlick! Throwing down two dollars and twenty two cents two 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 for truthology for ufology. And he says Japan and Russia landed on the moon. Well, not the countries, they landed a craft on the moon this week. Yep, you know what that means? Not good. Anytime those two adversaries do something together, it is not good. They're trying to build weapons. They're trying to make the moon a weapon. This is this has got to be stopped by some James Bond activity. The CIA needs to send over, I don't know, Triple X. <laughs> Remember that guy? Remember Vin Diesel? 
Thank you, Moonlick. Throwing down two, two, two for the greater cause of ufology. It's bigger than all of us. Thank you. Continuing supporter of Goofon. That guy. Moonlick. You did well. Well. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Look at that. So much love. This is so much love. This is the part of the show I've been waiting for. Rose is going to tell us everything we we uh, need to know. And go. And that's the way they viewed the Wanjina stories. The Wanjina stories were essentially stories of beings that came down and visited the Aboriginal people 30, 40,000 years ago. Um, there are similar stories, by the way, that go right back to Assyrian civilization. Oh. Uh, I mean, the other side of this that is fascinating is I've been engaging with um, archaeologists and uh, anthropologists who've talked to me about the implausibility of a lot of the modern explanations for some of the ancient buildings that exist on this planet that do not fit within the time frames of known human technology being developed. Even some of the Egyptian pyramids could not possibly have been built within the time frame that we've... Some of the Egyptian pyramids? Some of them described because they were working with bronze axes and you have almost laser beam accuracy in some of the buildings that were constructed. Um, some of the people that I've been talking to in the Pentagon have told me that they think there is strong evidence to suggest that there was a previous civilization on this planet. And um, one of the things that's been suggested to me is that there might have been a civilization that has lived, shared this planet with us that never left. What did he just say there? That hasn't been said before as I continue that sentence 10 seconds later. He didn't say anything new. Rose Cuckold never says anything new. Ever. Now that, and I know, you know, I used to watch R Rose and, and Bryce. I don't anymore because I can't stand Rose. But um, if you watch and still watch, if you still watch them, just note down what Rose is saying because he never says anything that you don't already know because he doesn't know anything. All this guy is doing is hijacking journalism in ufology, acting like he knows what he's talking about by just repeating the same things that have been said for the last hundred years. He's a fraud. He really is. Why do you think got shit on well he didn't why do you think they don't like him in australia in the media he can't get a job because he's he's a shyst shysting feisting zig fugo loves him though all the different areas of the world have different stories of god and i call that the little g these are beings that have godlike powers that are meddling in human affairs, but they're not what God is. The idea of whatever the big G, God, that created the universe, whatever force of nature that might be, gets different. I was told that there are numerous gods fighting amongst themselves and interjecting themselves into human affairs, that those myths... Who told you? Who told you? That's what I want to know. Isn't this fun? We could sit here all day. It's five more minutes left. But I didn't expect we would go this far. Let me just see what's next. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I think this looks better. I knew it was going to freeze. Your sister's got a mm, nine-minute mark. And then when I do it again, it's going to block. It's going to freeze again. Watch. Even if I fast forward it um, to the nine minutes, it, it'll do it again. It'll freeze me out. Let's go slow though. Go slow. Easy, easy. Here we go. Gentle. You write that Bush said to Chirac, quote, Jacques, you and I share a common faith. You're Roman Catholic, I'm Methodist, but we are both Christians committed to the teachings of the Bible. We share one common Lord. Mike! Bush goes on to say, quote, 
Gog and Magog are at work in the Middle East. Biblical prophecies are being fulfilled. This confrontation is willed by God, who wants to use this conflict to erase his people's enemies before a new age begins. End quote. They think there was some sort of a... Mike Johnson, two years! Feels like four. Thank you. That's, a, that's as long as you could be a member here. Thank you, Mike. Mole mole type creature that evolved over 65 million years to become yeah, us. All bullshit. I think that's all bullshit. I think you think evolution's bullshit? Um <laughs> no, I think that at some point in history uh they came someone came here and tampered with existing creatures and made us and upgraded us but, at very specific intervals. But bodies were recovered. Their DNA ha was exact. Here's one of the biggest jokesters in ufology, John Ramirez. This guy should quit while he's a dick. Examined, and they know what that alien genome look like and they look at humans and they can identify the same sequences and human genome. I think that's what led them to believe that there's a hybridization of, of humans. And they further said in this one day symposium that their familial lines, their families that have not only alien DNA, but enhanced alien DNA of interest to CIA. There's no proof of that anywhere anytime it's never happened unbelievable this is the world we live in it is very very fun isn't it i think so i think we're living in a very fun time especially in ufology because we we are seeing changes, right? We are seeing changes. But we are. We're seeing changes very quickly. And that is because of the internet. It's because of social media and whatnot. But these aren't little changes. These are big changes we're seeing. In ufology, even if it looks like, I know I say it all the time, two steps forward, one step back. But, you know, we do take that, step we get a step out of those two steps anyway right you're because you're only taking one step back okay fine so let's erase the negative and just say it's one step forward at least we've taken that because we have congressional hearing that's a step in the right direction even if you don't believe what anybody's saying still it's something now, we all know it's just window dressing for future contracts with, uh, you know, those non-existing programs. Reverse engineering, you know who from you know where, and we don't know anything. Yeah. I say just let's cut out all the bull crap and just say 50 million for the greater good. Doesn't that look good on paper? 50 million to the greater good. An addendum just got added to that. Of humanity. For the greater good of humanity. Oh, right there. I would donate. I would donate to that cause. Whatever it is. Yeah. Because it's for the greater good of humanity. What is it? Well, that's a mystery. It's a uh, reverse engineered alien technology, but we don't know if it's alien. It could be, could be old human cultures that used to be here 500 million years ago. You mean before the years, before the dinosaurs. Have you ever heard of the London Hammer? Yes, I know what it is. It's 400, no, million years old rich did you know that was a hoax it is yeah huh well, funny i haven't seen that so u.s special forces confession came out six days ago or so have you guys heard about this yeah i don't think i read it here yeah um he was inspired by David Grush having the guts to come forward. And, and this guy, uh, well, 
It's a very interesting story. Uh, the following is based on testimony of one person provided over a series of interviews and written correspondence edited and cut together in an attempt to create a cohesive timeline of the events as described. It was 1968, hey, the year I was born, if I remember correctly, and somewhere along the Cambodian border. We were getting the lay of the land on an LRRP, tracking supply routes into South Vietnam along Cambodia, and mapping them out for future raids and for the B-52 bombing campaign the following year that smashed the whole place to hell. Well, the object sort of appeared overhead. All of a sudden, a bright red orange glow, and it looked like it was sort of, I don't know, melting? Only some of us looked up in time, and we only got a brief glimpse through the tree cover. It was over our heads and gone in a flash. I, I couldn't tell you how high it was or how fast it was moving, but maybe four or five seconds later, there was a loud crash and a dull thump that you could feel through the ground. That let us know that it had fallen somewhere nearby. So we figured it was a plane. So for the life of me, I couldn't tell you what the origin shape of it was when it was plummeting overhead. It was just too fast. So I don't know what it looked like. All I remember was the orange glow and thinking of molten metal. I even ducked, you know, expecting some, uh, some to fall on me. Uh, we were close enough to the northern border that we knew better than to use our long range radios openly. The Soviets had sent their own special forces advisors armed with pretty good electronic snooping gear. And if they were nearby, they could pinpoint your location pretty accurately. So we were now on a rescue mission as far as everyone was concerned and figured we'd hold off on the radios until we got to the crash site and asked for extraction. Turns out the damn thing was further than we thought. A good three to four miles through awful terrain. When we got there, though, it was immediately obvious that uh, it wasn't a U.S. plane, or at least nothing like any of us have ever knew about. Our captain, obviously, we're going to withhold names here, had been in the black world for a while and knew there was some stuff flying over Vietnam made in the U.S. that the public still doesn't know about. But nothing like this. I mean, it reminded me of a giant metal egg that cracked open when it crashed. The entire scene was incredibly warm. And at first I thought, no, you know, it was just some crashed space capsule, you know, maybe Soviet since we were in their neck of the woods. But it was a, a dull gray. And it looked like it had been made from a single piece of metal. There were no seams, no bolts, screws, nothing. I've seen the way 3D printers work nowadays, and it looked like they had been made the same way. Never got a good look on the inside, so I couldn't tell you much about it. The brush around it was on fire, and it was hard to see inside through the broken side of the craft. I couldn't tell you if there were any occupants. I didn't see any. We called in the crash and reported ourselves on the scene, but were surprised to learn that there were already some birds en route told to secure the site, so we did just that. And uh, that's pretty much the beginning of this story. And uh, it's, it's all right. Typical. I mean, you could just guess how this ended. Can you? Can you guess? But that was a guy, I mean, this is a long story. I can't read all this. I mean, I'm still scrolling since I stopped. That's how long it is. But uh, it's, it's a, a real encounter. So a real threat back in the day. He said it looked like an egg that had cracked open. Didn't see anything inside of it. But doesn't that sound almost like a Tic Tac? And it, it was gray, seemingly made from one mold, like Bob, Blazer's, Bob Blazer has said before. 
looks like it was made from like an injection mold of some sort. So there were no screws, there were no rivets, there were nothing in there. Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's it. That's all I can say. I got to show you this. I, I don't like this. Oh, no, this is good. Oh, no. All right. I just forget what I just said. I thought that was something else. Watch this. We'll talk. Maybe. Maybe we'll talk after this. What happened? Oh, no. Happy Easter, that's right. Happy Easter weekend, everybody. Alien crafts at uh, Holloman Air Force Base. What did you see, Mr. Shuttle? I saw footage of three dish-shaped crafts. One of the crafts landed and two of them went away. Why did it land? It appeared to be in trouble because it oscillated all the way down to the ground. Stupid! A sliding door opened, the ramp was extended, and out came three aliens. They were human sized. They had odd gray complexion and a pronounced nose. They wore tight fitting jumpsuits, thin headdresses that appeared to be communication devices. In their hands, they held a translator. A Holloman base commander. But this is the most ridiculous story. No, it really is. It really is. How do they? How does he know any of this stuff? It's a story, yeah. How do you know? You can't understand what their intent is. You don't know if their ship was wobbly because it was in trouble. You're just using your human experiences to figure out what a craft, an alien craft is doing which you have no experience ever seeing. Well, it looked like it was, you know, it was doing this. Uh, you know. And then when it landed, oh, it landed. Yeah, it did crash. The occupants, were they injured? Ah, oh, they walked out. They had a headdress on. It looked like communication. To, oh, it looked like a communication. It couldn't just be their part of their head. Oh, no, fabric of something. How do you know it wasn't their head? That's their hair. I'm sorry. I just a little under. Uh, Another Air Force officer went out to meet. Uh, you actually saw these aliens on the film? Yes. This film footage sounded very, very special, and we wanted to use it as the ending of our television special. At the last minute, the film was confiscated. And Isn't that just a shame? We were going to show you the aliens, but what do you know? They confiscated it. All oh, I made, really. But you saw the aliens on this uh, tape? Yeah. Bullshit, I would have said. Bull. Bring the, show it to me now. Well, we don't have it anymore. Somebody stole it. You never had it. You're a freaking liar. If you had it, you would have made 16 copies of it. You would have sent it to friends and family all around the world. The news. Come on, man. Start peeing on my leg and tell me it's sneezing. We lost the whole finale of our show, but what I saw and heard was enough to convince me that, you know, the phenomenon of UFOs is real, very real. What did your superior officers tell you? I was told it was theatrical footage the Air Force has purchased to make a training zone. Landing of alien crafts at uh, Holloman Air Force Base. Watch. And what did you see, Mr. Shuttle? I saw footage of three dish-shaped crafts. One of the crafts landed and two of them went away. Why did it land? Sounds like he was rehearsing that statement. Did not sound like that was naturally just on his mind, you know. And it appeared to be in trouble because it oscillated all the way down to the ground. Sounds like he's reading. It appeared to be in trouble as if it was oscillating. Oh, I did it better than him, so I don't know what I'm talking about. The sliding door opened, the ramp was extended, and out came... Oh, it appears that it was in trouble, but, you know, they just happened to get the landing gear down and put out the, you know, the, the ramp. They had a ramp. Look at, does that look like an alien design to you? Is that what aliens would do? Walk down a ramp like that? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Slippery. Why would they do that? Oh, and they can easily breathe in our environment. Oh, it's amazing. What a story three aliens. They were human sized. They had odd gray complexion and a pronounced nose. They wore tight fitting jumpsuits, thin headdresses that appeared. 
You want to know why they were our size? Because if they were too big, giants existed. Can't have giants existing now or in the past. If they were too small, oh, those are the grays, 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 grays. But what did he say? Human size. Something that they would think of. That's not real. That's just to keep people away from singling out which race it would have been. Nobody knows now. Nobody knows. Oh, those are the, uh, no. Well, maybe they're the, no, those are shorter. The rep, no, those are bigger. And they would look ripped. These look like us, but bigger, you know. Oh, good point. I know. It's what I do. There to be communication devices in their hands. They held a translator. They, they, they just got to Earth, have communication devices conveniently in their hand. Like, it wouldn't be connected to their headdress or somewhere convenient you know they could just walk out into our environment and, and just breathe in the dusty air it's a miracle they didn't die right there like in that movie yeah where they came back from underneath the earth what was that war of the worlds they took two whiffs of the ozone and they passed out a holloman base commander and other air force officers went out to meet them. you actually saw these aliens on the film yes this film footage sounded did you hear how he said that you actually saw these aliens on the film? Yes. Yes. He did not want to talk about that one second longer. God, I wish very, I could go very... backwards. Anyway, that's good enough. That's good enough. You guys get the point. You always get the point. Goofonians in the house. Good job. All right. It's time. Major solar eclipse update from NASA. People are worried. Earthquake warnings. This is an into thin air presentation in five, four, three, two. Connecticut woke up to a minor earthquake on Thursday. A small 1.8 magnitude earthquake was recorded near Ledyard just after 8 in the morning. You heard that correct, my friends. Earthquakes in Connecticut. Not only that, but we have a situation taking place in Ontario that could be military related, but people want answers. And yes, everyone's been asking me, we are having earthquakes once again along those lines of the eclipse. There's no denying the fact that this area is in an uptick of seismic activity for one reason or another. We have been documenting it every day. And yes, my friends, you heard correct. If you did hear about this, NASA is going to be launching rockets into the moon's shadow during the great North American solar eclipse. If there wasn't already enough wild stuff about this eclipse, this helps top it off. We'll discuss this in just a minute, but I've never seen anything like this in my life. We are looking at two areas today, one being Brockville, Ontario, and the other being the state of Connecticut, specifically Southern Connecticut, where both areas have had rare seismic events. Connecticut is verifying three separate earthquakes, all very small, but still super rare. And then we have hundreds and even thousands of people in Ontario near Brockville that are reporting explosions all day. Yesterday, overnight, there are reports saying that people thought this was everything from earthquakes to meteors to a terrorist attack. You name it, it's on these user reports. And still, if you check out the USGS, there is no reported earthquakes in Ontario. Now, what we do have is that weird line coming from Texas straight up towards the Great Lakes of earthquakes. We've seen it before, but to see it now with this eclipse coming is just going to be the craziest thing every day when I look at it. Also, very quickly, I failed to mention I'm a huge Trailer Park Boys fan. That's why some of you may have seen that labeled over on my Google Earth app, so I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, before we finish up with that weird situation in Ontario, let's look very quickly at Connecticut with these three earthquakes. It's very odd. You don't see this too often, but here they are. In the last week, we've had one in New Hampshire as well, but these in Connecticut all took place yesterday with the one in New Hampshire taking place a day before that. So what we have here is a 1.8 a 1.6 and a 2.1, which was the initial earthquake. You do not get these too often in Connecticut. This is very close to Montauk, Long Island. We have Plum Island here, that government island where they do like 
It's a very weird place. I've tried getting as close to this island as possible, but you do get turned away. You cannot get to this island. Here is the Long Island Sound here. So many, many people live along this area. We got New York City way down here. So you can imagine when these earthquakes took place, people jumped online to talk about them. And of course, there was eclipse talk in there, April 8th, the end of the world, you name it. And to be honest, you can't really blame anybody. I mean, there's many of us that have been looking at this type of stuff for a long time, but we also have to sympathize and be patient with people that don't know about it yet. Try to be a teacher and not so much an a-hole. That's my motto. All right, and I know many of you have heard of this already, but how weird is this? NASA is going to be launching rockets into the moon's shadow during the eclipse. Now, why are they doing this? This is what they say. When the total solar eclipse passes over North America on April 8th, the sights of the moon and the sun will not be the only features flying high above Earth. NASA what? is planning to launch a series of rockets to study the impacts the event will have on the atmosphere. The space agency said three rockets will launch as part of the atmospheric perturbations around Eclipse Path mission from the NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The rocket. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, what is this? Come on. There's some. Oh, my God. I think we're going to have to go live during this event. Uh, something's going to happen. This is just too bizarre. So they're bringing in the National Guard in the places where you see the shaded area because they say hundreds of thousands of people are going to be taking over these towns that can't handle all those people. So they're there for the protection. Really? How are they going to cover all those 80 million people. You, they, This is ridiculous. And now they're going to be throwing up rockets at the same time. <laughs> this is crazy talk. What is going on? Maybe there's something. Oh, this is great stuff. They are making me want to like, I may have to drive maybe to, uh, I don't know, Arkansas. Yeah, it looks like Arkansas may be for me. I may go. Never know. All right, let's finish. Rockets will be tasked with taking observations of how the sudden drop in sunlight affects the ionosphere. And then it goes on to talk about how understanding the ionosphere is a very important thing and this and that. But is this really why they're doing this? No. I guess this is as good as mine. Because at this point, you and I both know there is way <sighs> too many weird things going on with this solar eclipse that did not take place at all just back in 2017 where we went through another solar eclipse. So people are trying to find out why this one is so special and why so many historic things are attached to it. And now finally, I I have a little bit of information about what took place in Canada. If you have any information about this, please send it to me because as of right now, a good friend of mine just sent me this message when they spoke to someone about the situation who lives in Canada. I just called Fort Drum Range Control. The Air Force is out doing bomb runs. I may hear a few more. Nothing to worry about. Freedom, my friend. So yeah. hopefully that's exactly what this was. But again, when you go and read the reports, right. I'll leave the link in the description box. You could tell people were very worried. And I think it has to do Look with at exactly those people. what we're talking about. This eclipse. All the crazy stuff in the news that I'm not even going to mention here. That's for X and Instagram if you want to go check those out. But everybody is worried and on edge for Ten something days. very extreme to happen. And if you're the type of person that believes that energy fuels reality, then in the end, with all this negative energy, we could be manifesting something that's not so good. So we got to try to stay positive and learn about this stuff in a way to where it can actually help us. And I'm serious. If not for some of you out there, I wouldn't have half the information that I'm able to produce for you all. So it goes without saying that I am super, super grateful for all you contribute to this channel. It would not be here without you. All right, my friends, that is the info I have. Please share this wow. video on all your social media platforms. It is very important to get this information out and be aware rather than be in the dark. All right, shout out to Canada. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Man. Isn't that weird? It's so bizarre. The link to that video will be in the show description. Soon as the show ends, about 10 minutes. Man, this is really fun. 10 days and counting. So not Monday, but the following Monday. Yeah, right? Yeah. What time? I forget. I don't think I'll go live unless I'm there. I don't know if I'm going to drive 20 hours to see a shadow. It'd be cool, though. But uh, I've been in a, a few solar eclipses. It's very bizarre. Yeah, street lights come on. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it looks like, um, uh, like, you know, like weird. Uh, you know what it looks like. It, it even feels different. I can't explain it. it. It's like everything stops. It's not the same when it's a cloud. A cloud gives you totally different kind of coverage than having the actual moon covering up 100 miles, you know, in all directions. It's not the same as a storm front. It's just, it's it's going to be cool. I wish I'd be able to, I think where I live, I'm going to see half of an eclipse, I think, yeah. I don't know, but uh, it's going to be fun. I think something major is going to happen. Or maybe it's a trigger event. Maybe this solar eclipse opens a portal to another dimension. So we're sending the rocketeer out there to intercept it, see? Oh my God, that's what they're doing. This is like uh, Avengers. Yeah, they're coming through the portal. Shoot them as they're coming through. Right? The big metal worms and shit. And the big uh, metal uh, hornets. Oh, that was fun. Remember those days? Uh, New York was devastated. Devastated. It was fun. Because what's going to happen? If that's real, that'd be so much fun. I'm serious. So, a lot of you know that uh, I am going to be starting another channel. And uh, <clears throat> it is about the Constitution. And there's going to be very, well, it's going to be very... Uh, scary because I'm going to be out in public recording the public and the public doesn't like to be recorded. It'll all be legal. I'll be wearing a mask, glasses, and a hat. Nobody will know me. Um, when I make these videos, I'm probably going to alter my voice so nobody knows it's me. <clears throat> but um, I want to stay anonymous when I do it. But it's um, testing our rights in public with the public and police because police, believe it or not, don't know the law. They really don't know anything. Do you know it only takes what? Eight weeks to become an officer, but it takes two years to become a barber. So it takes two years to cut your head, but it takes eight weeks to blow it off. Something wrong there. So here's a video of what I'm, I am against. And this is very graphic. But it's all blurred out. It's all blurred so you don't see anything. Just use your imagination. So watch. He was an assistant store manager at Sportsman's Warehouse. This is Sergeant Michael Gillis ramming Herndon in the head with an M4 and using a stun gun. Multiple injuries, including a concussion, and he has permanent nerve damage and some memory loss. As four men are holding him down, the other pig will take the butt of a gun and strike the man in the top of the head. They kind of chuckled and said, hey, we must have mistaken you for the bad guy. And you would not change a thing. No. Sexually harassing women at the Starbucks. Yeah. Also for inappropriately selling weapons. Yes. Sir. Him. He. This is a cop. He was inappropriately, uh, uh, you know, with women. He got caught stealing. This is a, a cop. I did that. You've been placed on leave with pay four times. Yes, ma'am. What types of incidents cause an officer to be placed on leave with pay? Shooting incidents where somebody dies or there's substantial bodily harm to that person. This guy is a sexual assaulter. He is a weapons dealer. This man punched a woman in the face, and now here he head strikes a man with the butt of a gun. They will do anything to protect their own. He was 
So we don't want that guy being a cop. That's extreme. Not what I'll be doing, but um, it just gives you an idea of what policing has come to in this country. And uh, they swear an oath to the Constitution. And they don't know it, but they swore that they don't know it. There has never been, in the seven years I'm watching all these videos, probably a thousand times I've seen police ask, what is the First Amendment? And they all say the same thing, freedom of speech. And and there's five components. You swore an oath. You don't know? Freedom of religion, right? So, uh, they don't know. Freedom to, um, what is it? Assemble. Yeah, I forget the other one. Watch this. So, this guy did nothing wrong. Cops are on his on his property without a warrant. They're not supposed to be on private property unless they have a warrant. That's what I'm, my understanding is, or they're doing a no-knock, but that's not what this is. Anyway, this, this guy unalives a man and his dog for, well, you'll see, for standing up for his rights on his property. They just grabbed him, right? They just grabbed him because he wanted to go in his house. They don't know if he's going to get a gun. And they used this officer safety bullshit. But they, they could have just stopped him from going in. They didn't have to do what they do next. There goes the dog. Five, six, seven. Shot him nine times and tased him. Try to get cops on him, okay? We have medical coming for you. Hey, cops. He shot his gun nine times. What did he do? Only hit him once? The guy dies later. We're hurting, watching thousands and thousands of videos of you murder us, beat us, torture us in the streets. And if you get shot, they will cuff you up and watch you get out on the ground. It's true. They shoot you. And you're dead, but they still handcuff you. I've seen countless videos where they handcuff somebody who died. <laughs> They're that scared shouldn't be a cop and they always say it's officer safety i'm going home to my family they don't care about us they really don't you think they do and you think i'm wrong probably right i know this isn't the crowd this isn't ufology what i'm doing here but i'm trying to just show you what i'm doing if you want to come along you know where to find me um i will send the link out to some people if they want but um, that's it. You know, I'm just trying to uh, re the reality is I'm not doing what you're seeing here. And that's not me. I'm basically going out in public and just recording stuff and waiting for the reaction because I'll be wearing a mask, glasses and a hat. And that alone will piss people off. People don't like other people wearing masks while holding a camera. They hate it. Yet for two years, we had to wear masks. Now all of a sudden, you put a camera in your hand. and They hate it. And, they, and people will get physical. I just watched three people get arrested today for putting hands on the guy, for recording from a distance. They walked up to him and assaulted him. 
for no reason. Uh, it's terrible. And I try to, what my goal is going to be is to educate the public and police. And we want to get the bad cops off the streets. It's ridiculous right now. Watch. It's sickening and stuff like that says this is why I don't trust you. It's bad. Watch officer Matthew Rodriguez. You see him get up from a chair during the booking process. He and the prisoner, they exchange words. Look, his hands are down. They're almost in his pocket. No threat. They're just talking. And then he hits the 19-year-old, slams him up against a wall into the ground. Within Didn't six like seconds, the arresting this. officers rush in. Commissioner Dwyer says what you see now is their attempt to defuse the situation. The assault continues as Rodriguez hits the 19-year-old again. Look at that. Pulling him up by his hair and then throwing him into a jail oh, cell. Officer God. Rodriguez was placed on leave three hours later. Now when people walk by and say, hey, Cabin, spit on the ground and say you're a scum sucking pig now you know the reason why now you know why we disrespect you openly we the people can now see everything youtube and tiktok and instagram and facebook are doing everything they can to censor and block the images if you're a part of that pig shack organization you're complicit delete laws is sitting in jail right now for another uh 170 days For not breaking the law because a judge's ego and a cop's ego were bruised. So they took it out on him. It's not justice. It's an injustice. There were people applauding the judge for throwing him in jail because these are bootlickers. People that love police don't believe that police are corrupt. I just had a discussion with my father last week because he's interested in what I'm doing. And I said, you were a cop for 20 years. You told me what you did. And you're going to tell me now you didn't? You didn't lie on police reports? Never. I go, you told me you did last year? No, I didn't. I said, you're doing it again. Now you're lying to me. Hey. Now, all of a sudden, my dad's Parkinson's is gone. He can speak normally. How'd that happen? I got it out of him. Now he's trying to backpedal. So I'm like, Dad, you told me you did. You told me you and Uncle Paulie did it all the time. To people you didn't like. I would never do that. I never did that. We'd get fired for that. I go, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> No, you would not back in the 60s, man. So my dad's trying to backpedal. Eh, I want to say it's his Parkinson's, but he's using it as, as an excuse. He told me, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll lie on a report. We know the guy's dirty. I'm like, wow, my own father. Bad. Bad dad. Bad. I think he remembered that conversation and now he's trying to backpedal as if it he didn't say it. I'm I'm not I'm not pushing it anymore. It didn't turn into an argument, but where we live in a world right now that the constitution is being stepped on. We're being lied to. The media cut if you guys ever do follow me on this other channel, I think you're going to be really impressed. I think you're going to enjoy the conversations we have. Because I'm not just blowing smoke here. I don't hate police. I hate the system that they have to follow. And all the policies and procedures. And everything's its really turned into... It's a police state we're living in. You're guilty until you're innocent. It's always been that way. But even with cameras, these guys are dirty. They're still doing it. And now they just, they hire a woman, a black man, you know, an Ethiopian, whatever, because they have to meet that racially uh, adjusted quota. 
and you're not getting the best people in there. No offense to women, but I don't think they should be arresting men on the street. Alone. It's very, very, very scary. There's not one woman out there that could literally, and I'm not saying this to be mean. It's the truth. All the auditors talk about it. The women who are police are the most corrupt because they're not as strong as the men and they violate our rights to detain us and they lie and they'll put hands on you knowing that you're not going to do anything because two reasons, it's a cop and it's a woman and they use that against you and it's very, very bad and judges and and other cops allow it to happen. Oh, God forbid. God forbid something goes wrong. She's not going to be able to detain anybody in a violent rage. A man can't even do it alone with another man. That's why you need three men. It is. And my father said the same thing. He said in New York, they didn't hire women when he was a cop to be cops. They didn't do it. There were no women. And none of them would work with them. Because they're a liability on the street. To be a man in a cop uniform is a lot different than a woman being in a cop uniform. You're not going to get the same respect. So the women, when they're cops, they act angry. And they think they're being like a man, but they're not. They're being rude and they're trying to intimidate you because of the badge and the gun. You respect my authority because I'm a woman with a badge. And they'll violate, give me your ID, what I do wrong. Give it to me, sir, or you'll go in cuffs. For what? What law did I break? Turn around, you know. It happens with men too, but the women, if if I decided to run, I'm going to get shot in the back. If I decided to, to, to say, no, you don't have a right. If I move like this, you know, it's, you're down six in the neck. So it's a different world. Don't be mad at me. All right. This is why I shouldn't talk about it here. But this is what's going on in the, on the other channel. Yeah. Hasn't started yet. I haven't even put up the channel name or anything yet. Nope. So, uh, all right. Thank you for hanging out. Moderators, super chatters, and everybody else. Appreciate the support. Fantastic. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. It's Saturday. Seven. Seven o'clock. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me see tomorrow. Hold on. All right. What time? Oh, it's on at 10. Let's see here. Preliminary card. Starts at 7. Who's fighting? All right, we'll be doing uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow. 5 o'clock. Thanks for hanging out. And like I say, we do it here. We're still here every night. I don't know how I did two hours plus. I really don't. But I am going to go to sleep right after this. Oh, it's truthology for ufology for you. That was good. I like that. All right. Have a good weekend. Happy Easter. We'll be here Easter. Oh, Easter. I don't know. Members? Yeah, it's Easter Sunday. I don't know if I'll be here live. I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll I'll put something up for the members. That's what I think I'll do. All right. Yeah. All right. Keep your eyes and ears open. Tomorrow we'll be here at 5, though. Enjoy the rest of tonight. My goofonians. Alien bless.
Well, do you not think that you yeah. can just stop and ID anyone you want? Do you know what the Fourth Amendment is, sir? What is it? Right of freedom. No way you no just said speech. that. Well, that's the First Amendment. Oh, they're, they're locking me out? out? Lieutenant Solomon, you're opening your city up for a lawsuit by allowing this door to be locked. So why'd they send the sheriff down here for a guy with a camera? Sent the sheriff. I heard them call the sheriff down here. So now you're lying on cameras. No one in here knows what the hell they're talking about. This is getting crazy. I asked him what the Fourth Amendment was, and he says freedom. That doesn't matter. It's not required no. by law for anybody to know it. And get like, ready, brother. You get ready. You swore an oath to the Constitution when you were signed in. So you were there. You're telling us we're lying. No, you're lying. it is required. No. Your whole job is to uphold the Constitution. Our whole job is to uphold the, the state Constitution. laws that are in the Nope. What's more important than state laws? Federal laws. Federal law doesn't supersede it state law. No way That's you where just where said that. Wrong. What's your name? I already said it. You didn't give us your full name. I don't I have told to. you my full name and who I work yeah, for. Yeah, because it's your job to. Show me the law. It says that I have to give you my name. That's in your policy. 